Yeah. All right, welcome everybody to our latest Live Motocross podcast as I'm joined by former star racer Jackson Richardson who has been once again setting the moto world alight with his quality banter of late as we chat all things Oz X from a wild night of action in Wollongong. Obviously, before we get cracking, I'd like to thank the partners in 24MX, Dirt Store, Hook Silkaleen and Dragon Energy for all their incredible support as without them, it does be possible. All right, welcome, mate. How was the weekend? It was a busy one from you between golfing, corporate box at the NBL, Supercross. You got the full experience, mate. So how was it for you? Oh, I was wedged from Saturday, pretty much from the moment I got up on Saturday morning. Got a quick nine in, absolutely shot horrendous. Gender reveal party, then the NBL. I had to do double duty at the NBL. <laughs> had to watch the game live. Had a decent wager on that one. Then I had to watch the Supercross as well because I wasn't going to miss that one while I was at the game. I had to, I had to watch it live and in action. You heard a few looks from the people around you in the box there, mate, sort of tuck it into both events and get the most yeah. out of it. Oh, big time. Well, they thought they must have thought I had um, a nervous twitch or something because I was just like, it was looking <laughs> down at the phone, looking up at the game, looking up. But, but I mean, I knew what was going to happen. I mean, the Cairns tire pans, typical fourth quarter collapse, as expected. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I knew what was to come. Because no one had, I don't think anyone had really, but who I was with hadn't been really watching the season. And because uh, they were talking like, oh, yeah, we got a good team this year. I was like, you haven't seen this team in the fourth quarter, have you, fellas? <laughs> I was like, just wait till the fourth quarter. Sure enough, we were up by 10. And then the collapse just started against against Brisbane, who I believe is last on the ladder at the moment. <laughs> and I was like, yep, here it comes. And then sure enough, <laughs> So I didn't miss much of the game when I was looking down at the phone, put it that way. Mate, yeah, you actually on uh, before you had some pre-race content to obviously the awesome news by the series of JT. Jason Thomas came down, was in the booth. Obviously, he's a really good, you know, live motocross. He's on a lot of podcasts with me. He's a great bloke, so you're sort of in the here, mate. But yeah, you certainly uh, punched out some good content there, mate. He's an absolute unit, isn't he? Great bloke, great for the series. And the rig certainly puts us all to shame, doesn't it? Oh, man, definitely. I mean, the, the threads on those shirts were absolutely <laughs> at their peak. And then I, I believe the one on the broadcast was even tighter. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know how that thing stayed on all night. I mean, the, the man is just looking phenomenal at the moment. But it's good to have him out here. It's good to have him out here on the broadcast. Like him and Hammy seem to work work well together in that. And yeah, no, it was awesome, mate. It was good to have him in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it brings the star power and all those eyes for America will be tuning in as well. So really good for the series. It was obviously a wild night of action, mate. Obviously, we'll get cracking into it. So blokes were going down all over the shop, basically. Yeah, but the key thing, the Savachi fence, you know, grenading, save, whatever you want to call it, mate. But he did that pretty masterfully, didn't he, mate? So I guess we'll start with that one. So how did he get out of that alive? I don't know, but still got the win with 5-1-1 scores. What a ride by him. Oh, man. Unbelievable ride from him. It Basically, it was almost a perfect night, other than that and his and the first uh, main event of the Triple Crown. But I didn't actually know this because, like, they showed that one from the front when um he almost went off the side, and I thought he must have just got cross rot cross rutted or something like that. But apparently, um, he uh when he commented on my uh my last video, he said a, a lap rider actually come up short got out of shape and clipped him and it shot him off to the right there. And I was thinking at the start of the day, because I seen that net on me and I was thinking, man, that thing is not that thing is not gonna do anything. I was like, I don't know who the engineer they've got in to put this down or who certified this thing. But that thing is not stopping anyone from going off the side. If anything, it's just gonna get wrapped up in the bike somehow. But that he 50 50 that thing, and that thing held up, and it saved him from oh, a massive injury. That could have been like, oh, that would have been like horrendous if that thing wasn't there. So, so I had to take back what I said, and I was like, man, whoever fastened that thing down, <laughs> I mean, they need a raise after that one because they've obviously chem set the thing down. So that thing wasn't going anywhere. 
<laughs> yeah, the triple crowds were wild, weren't they, mate? I guess that format, especially for some of those American races, obviously it's even more sort of, you know, crazy than their triple crowns over there, really. So I guess it's good for the entertainment, the excitement. It sort of brings everything closer and it elevates the drama, three gate drops. So I guess if you were a racer, mate, how much would you like doing it one? And then obviously those quick turnarounds must be so difficult as well. And then even the lappers on the short races were causing chaos everywhere. So if you didn't get oh. the start, you are in for some pretty big time drama, weren't you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, when I was, yeah, when I was racing in those ones, I mean, I know Dino's come out and said he's not a particular fan of them. I mean, I wasn't either because, um, like, the start is easily, especially in Supercross. I mean, in motocross too. That's probably the most dangerous part of the race when everyone's, like, going everywhere, especially when you're going into a rhythm section straight off the bat. I mean, we've seen that in the 250 heat where a lot of guys went down hard and a lot of them a lot of them are, are now injured. So we basically sawed that, field, sawed that field in half. But, yeah, and then, like, the break, it, seem, it seems like a little bit. I mean, it seems like, it, oh, well, it isn't much. It's five minutes. So, like, some guys are already half fatigued from that one. And then when you're doing another start and like everyone's kind of cold again, everyone's a little bit out of whack and like, and like just the smallest miscalculation by someone, which like what we saw in the heat race there, like, um, Lawa just over, like just over jumped, miscalculated a little bit and Kingsford jumped into the back of him. Reese Bud didn't, he doubled instead of tripling and one guy was already committed and he launched the thing, landed right on the back of him. Like there was like two separate incidents in that one that were just catastrophic. And yeah, like just the smallest miscalculation, like it's good for the fans. Don't get me wrong. And I mean, I love watching them now. I'm a big advocate for them now, now that I'm not out there, but for the guys out there, I mean, it is as hectic as it gets. Yeah, mate, it sure is. And obviously the epitome of hectic was, yeah, Brody Connolly obviously hitting those tough blocks as well. And they were causing some oh. problems in themselves too, obviously, in his choice comments, mate. You made a nice video about that. Encourage all the fans to go check that out. But yeah, what a sort of asset to the series, mate, with his commentary. And he's always sort of pretty honest and pretty brutal and he loves a fight. So he's a great asset for the Aussie series, outdoors, indoors, whatever, mate. Hopefully he stays around a little bit longer, but he's probably destined for America or the GPs one day. He's that talented. But yeah, just your take on oh, his. Oh, yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. He's like he's destined for like Europe or America, wherever he decides to go. I'm sure he's going to have success. And like that wreck that he had in that second main event, because like they just caught it on camera, but you couldn't really see it. But someone put it on socials from behind and caught the whole thing. And that was a brutal wreck. Like he fell from the sky on that one hits the tough block just just face planted got back up got going i think like he snapped the lever off and all that jazz and i was like man this guy this guy's obviously throwing the weights around a bit because a normal fellow wouldn't bounce up like that one because that was hectic and then the mid-race interview i mean couldn't have got him at a worse time <laughs> i mean He's, he's obviously amped out. He's just fallen from like six stories up onto his face. He snapped the peak off. And then he probably he probably wasn't thinking straight to begin with, but just drops the F-bomb live on TV, which I can't blame him for that. I probably would have done the same thing in that situation. But like it, just, it made for great television. I hope he didn't get in trouble for it. Maybe a little slap on the wrist, maybe just keep it in check next time, but... Oh, I love it. And uh, I've listened to a few of his interviews and like, uh, he's a character, like so good for the sport to have. Cause like, yeah, he just doesn't take any shit. And like, he's just as tough as they come. Yeah, mate, well said. He loves the fights and he, yeah, he's, he's a tough competitor, mate. So you definitely sort of, what if you're going to bang bars with him, you want to make sure you can back it up. And it's been a pretty wild night for the Honda guys, as we've already discussed. But I suppose on the night, Dino was really good as well. You know, he was one of the guys that was doing the whoops. Again, they really ended up being jumpers, I guess. But he was pretty smart. There's a few sketchy moments even from him. He's a very smooth operator. And obviously, yeah, third race, he thought he might have been able to charge down. Joey was, had some good speed, but yeah, the lappers kind of cost him. But he's racing well, mate. You know, the talent's really high in that series. And for him not to be 
winning after three rounds. I know Sabachi is an absolute weapon, but he'll want to come out the last two rounds. You'll be in Adelaide. Going to be some pretty quality racing. That'll be another wild format with many gate drops as well, I think, mate. But yeah, he's a great asset to the series too. Obviously, WSX, OzX, he's doing it all, mate. And obviously, we've got to touch on the race bike shakedown, putting it into the pond as well, mate, where you covered pretty emphatically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk about a lead up to a race event on the fresh 2025. Um, I think you might have just been checking to see if the thing was waterproof just in case, <laughs> just in case they had a mud race. But oh, yeah, yeah, he was saying, um, he had a, he hit a soft spot just before a jump. And it just hooked him, and he just put it straight into the pond. And like, oh, like the mechanic must have been putting in some serious OT to get that thing back up and running. He would have had that thing pulled apart, like from head to toe, to make sure that thing was going to be good for the weekend. So, not an ideal lead up to it, but but still, he had a solid night. Just the starts are hurting Dino at the moment, because especially on a track like that, there was only. There was only a couple of spots where you could really like make a move, because like um, like he had an advantage in the whoops for sure. Like I thought the way he was skipping them was the quickest way. Like definitely, a lot of guys were jumping in them. They really got chewed out a lot, so I think that was inevitable at some point. But um, but yeah, just like the starts are just killing him at the moment, and when Sabachi gets out in front, I mean he's just. He's just on one right now, and he's feel, and it looks like he's starting to sort that bike out a bit more. So, so unless you start in front of him, it's going to be hard to make your way around him. And then, especially with Adelaide this weekend, like I don't know exactly in terms of where they're putting a track. I've sort of got an idea of where they're having it. Which, if that's the case, it's going to be a pretty small and like tight track. So a start, a start is basically the race. Unless you're going to run it in on him and T-bone him, like I can't see any other way of getting around him if the track's tight. Yeah, mate, and you're confirmed to be going to that one, bringing some content, mate. So just give us a little rundown of what you're going to be up to and what it's look like for you, mate, because it's going to be action packed for you. You can actually get around the pits this time, obviously, as opposed to racing where you sort of all systems go, but you can sort of just be living it up, mate. Really? Yeah. Oh, definitely. No, it'll be good to get over to that one. I was gonna be, I was gonna be trying to make it to at least one round this year, and I can't. I was originally planning on the Melbourne one, but. Unfortunately, that weekend, my mate's having his 30th birthday and we're going to be playing golf and drinking beers all weekend. So, unfortunately, going to miss that one due to that one. But but at least the schedule has lined up where I can make it over to my favourite city in Australia, outside of my hometown in Cairns, is Radelaide. I mean, I have that place circled on the calendar every year when we went there. So, And especially now that I'm not competing... I can definitely let loose a little bit this weekend. Probably a few pub runs before the before the festivities kick off over there. And yeah, I'll be I'll probably be doing a vault a vlog for um Best over there. The Oz Supercross guys asked if I wanted to do a takeover on the social media, which I mean that's a fucking pretty dangerous move if you ask me, <laughs> but <laughs> I I don't know what HR's gonna think of this one, but but yeah, so we got a few things lined up over there, but mainly I'm just I'm just uh, happy to get back to the races. Like I haven't been to them for a long time now, so be good to get over there, see all the boys, and because now I'm not racing. Because usually when you're racing, you're locked in for the day. You don't want you don't really socialize too much. But I'm just going to be a social butterfly that weekend, so I'm stoked. Mate, we need to, uh, you might be on double duties covering the V8s too. You remember, obviously, you remember the street talk with Sam Newman on the footy show where you just oh, go around yeah. interviewing some bright characters, mate. There should be plenty to focus on on that event, so maybe they could sort of incorporate that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, we actually did an event there a couple of years ago. It was called, um, I don't know if you ever remember, we did this thing called Split Rhythm one year. We did that at the Supercars one year, and that one was, like, absolutely epic. Actually, one thing I am dying for when i get over there i remember this from when we did the split rhythm they had this calamari truck that was there and we must have we must have had at least two kilos worth of calamari out of this thing over the that weekend it was like whatever spare break we had like as soon as practice finished me and my mechanic pete were like 
we'll go to that calamari truck game. <laughs> we'll get a, we'll get a cup of squid. So I'm hoping <laughs> they got that one there for that weekend. And then obviously I'll be I'll be visiting the wool shed over there at some point uh, after the racing is complete. Probably even after qualifying's done as well, I'll probably get in there. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just keen to I'm just keen to get around and check it out and just hang out for the weekend mostly. Oh mate, it's gonna be epic. We look forward to seeing what you produce. It should be uh, box office, as we say, mate. But yeah, I'll back to the racing because this is a bit of a rapid fire one. Obviously, you've got some stuff to do. But uh, yeah, Clout, obviously another great effort by him. And you said in the preview pod that, that track was going to be super narrow due to the footprint of that stadium, and it certainly lived up to that, mate. But yeah, another moto win, massive effort by Clout. Obviously, he's always up for the challenge and enjoys, you know, just putting himself up there, being the best Aussie. He's really comfortable on that bike now. He's got the speed, and he's sort of the main Aussie guy bringing the heat to these imports, mate. So despite the fact he obviously did the WSX and that didn't go to plan for him for many reasons, you know, but he's come back probably a bit jet lagged and he probably, if he didn't get bumped off the track in that third one, he would have had a chance of winning by Tanty because he got the start and he just sort of got shoved wide. But mate, yeah, the chaos gets you in those races. But yeah, he looks happy in that Empire Kawasaki, happy with the team, ready for him to rumble in Adelaide, I guess, mate. So your take on Clout's night? Yeah, I mean, Cloudy had an exceptional night. Yeah, like getting that, uh, like the heat race win, like watching that, I was... I was like, he look, he's starting to look like he's like comfortable on that bike now, and like he's always been good at Supercross, but now he's like he's like he's coming into a bit of form, and then getting that first uh, main event win was obviously huge for him, getting a start, and then like just and like he, like Dino gave him all he could handle. He was right there on him, but but he was able to weather the storm and then hold him off for that win, and then then just a couple of like not as good of a start which which just goes to show how important it is like he started like not horrible he was just behind the guys but like when you get these guys are so good like if you're back there like amongst it you're in these battles and especially on that track like when it was really tight and uh hard to pass on the layout sort of didn't really favor that and like and like these like especially Dino and Savachi, once they're out in front, like it's it's almost game over unless they unless they make a mistake, which is rare. So, but like he didn't lose he didn't lose too many points. I think he only lost five on the weekend. So like he's still right there. And like with these shorter races, I think they suit they suit his they suit him a bit more. He's a good like he gets out. He can sprint. He can do it all. He can do the sprints. He can go the distance as well if he has to. So, um, so yeah, I'm not counting him out of this one bit. Like, and and the guy just like he's got a ton of confidence too. And especially after getting the win, it'll benefit him a lot. So, so yeah, like an Aussie taking it to these guys, like it's good to see. It's good to have someone in the fight. Yeah, it's going to be great, mate. Obviously, those guys have a week off, you know, full week to prepare, train, rest. We absolutely come out swinging for Adelaide, mate. So you should get a lot of these guys at their peak ready for you, mate, in person. So that'll be good and obviously beaten. Obviously, he was another victim of one of your posts as well, mate. But he was looking great too, making great strides, riding, you know, as that CDR main man because Mossy had to sit out the main event. He's having a bit of a rough start to his WSX and OzX. So we wish him all the best and hope he's back for Adelaide too. But yeah, it's not quite gone to plan for him. But yeah, Beaton's making really good progress. He's just getting those gains every week week getting the gate drops he's staying fit you know he's looking pretty good isn't he mate you can't really knock him and same with Tanty he's looking really good he's had a lot of injuries of late too last couple yeah. of years but yeah it was racy the starts were good skills speed got good race craft but if he just avoided a couple of those little mistakes he could have been on the box for sure so it's all building up to a nice Adelaide with a couple of these guys too yeah absolutely I mean yeah Jed has yeah he's exceeded my expectations for him in this series so far for sure because yeah like we said on the last one when I watched him a few years ago on Supercross, like it was, it was almost un- like you didn't want to watch. Like he was so uncomfortable, and now like, like he looks like he belongs out there, and he belongs up the front too. Like he's just been so consistent, and he doesn't look like he's trying too hard. He's obviously riding within what he feels is his capabilities out there. He said he said that in a few interviews, which, which like is is good he's putting the plan into action and like like he's fourth in the championship like a lot of these other guys who've had a lot of experience way more experience than him over the years have been making mistakes and like he's just turning laps like it's nothing like 
crazy. It doesn't make you go, oh, wow. But, like, it's just consistency. Consistently, consistency pays dividends like you wouldn't believe. So, so it's good. And he's just getting that confidence up. And, like, I feel like he made a jump from round one and two to this one. So, like, just he's just building blocks as he goes, which is awesome to see. Yeah, well said, mate. Before we wrap this one up, any final thoughts? Obviously, Shane McElrath in SX2 Masterclass. Very imperious display there, mate. He did it all so well, managed the race, all the situations, the track. Really good decision-making and judgment throughout. So, stepped up when it mattered most. And, yeah, he's looking really good. The complete package on the bike, the starts, the team, him. Intensity's there. It's obviously such an accomplished race. He's done so much in the sport. And he's a top bloke, mate. So, any final thoughts? Any uh, thing you'd like to touch on? Any content you got coming up, mate, before we wrap this one up? Yeah, I mean, well, there's no content in the works as of yet. I'm, I am definitely scouring the socials to see if anything pops up leading into this one. So, yeah, it'll be on the watch. But, yeah, but yeah, on Shane's performance, like, that was, yeah, that was just a beatdown, honestly. Like, he was just on one on the weekend, and he's got that bike figured out. And then, like, even with uh, a not-so-great start, he made his way to the front, like, no big deal on a track that was hard to pass on. So, so yeah, it's going to be tough to, it's going to be tough to take him off. The guys are going to like, they're going to have to get aggressive now, (laughs) especially like with a bit of a, like, and it's not a massive points lead that he's got. I mean, if he has a bad race, the boys are back in it, but the way he's looking right now and he's getting the starts, he can make his way through if he has to like round one, like he was so far off the pace like i was thinking jeez i was like shane o might be in trouble this this season like like he might be in trouble here but second night he figured it out and then this one he's just made a massive leap and now i'm like the rest of the field is in strife and the championship is on life support for the rest of them because shane mac is on a tear and yeah, it's going to be hard to stop him. Nah, it's going to be awesome, mate. And yeah, thanks again for taking the time, mate. It's been a good little chat, this one. We might do one leading yeah. into Adelaide just to get the preview, build the hype for your appearance and all that, mate. So, yeah, thanks yeah. again for joining us. And obviously, thank the partners in 24MX, Dirt Store, Duke Silkeline, and Dragon Energy for all their support. That's been the AusX Review from Wollongong with Jats Richo. Thanks again, mate. We'll catch up soon. Absolutely, mate. Can't wait.